welcome back to my channel. My name is Ulrike. I am a K-beauty and skincare content creator and general skincare enthusiast. And as promised last week, uh, today I wanted to introduce you to three more Korean sunscreens. Two of them are pretty new launches. The other one is from last year, I believe, but very popular in Korea. Uh, that I've been testing out and just um, share my thoughts and give you a little review right before uh, the hotter part of the year starts and you probably want to stock up on those sunscreens. The first sunscreen that I've been testing for the couple of, last couple of weeks is one that I really didn't know anything about. The only reason I got it is because I saw that it just shot up to the top 10, if not the top five, um, in the skincare category of the ranking, the Olive Young ranking in Korea, uh, like that. It was just suddenly there and hasn't really budged from the top 10 spot it is at the moment seemingly one of the best selling sunscreens in Korea. And when I uh, see that, then I obviously always go, okay, maybe this one is worth testing. And it is this one, which I wonder if you've seen this one before. I feel I have not seen any English speaking influences about this one yet, but maybe I just haven't seen it. And it is the Ate Vegan Relief Sun Essence with SPF 50 plus, of course, and PA quadruple plus. Um, the thing about this one is, I do not know <laughs> if this one is only popular because it seems to be heavily pushed by popular Korean influencers in Korea. Um, I saw it advertised at the Korean Olive Young website with basically just influencer pictures. And I believe those are pretty much the most popular ones. So I'm honestly not sure if this is truly popular or if people just kind of buy it at the moment as a sort of hype that will die down. If it's kind of influencer pushed manufactured hype or word of mouth, this is really a good product hype. So I kind of went into this being a little bit skeptical when it comes to testing the sunscreen. Nevertheless, I got a really good deal for a set where I didn't just get the 40 mil size, but actually a larger 70 mil size as well uh, for I think around $30. So I have a lot of the sunscreen now <laughs> that I have to get through. <laughs> Firstly, I really do like the texture of this. It is very lightweight, almost kind of fluid-like sort of this essence sun fluid style texture that Colma Korea just kind of nails. And I don't think there's any manufacturer that, that can quite compete with their expertise when it comes to pleasant textures. Um, so this one definitely super moisturizing while at the same time being very lightweight and lacking that greasy feel that you sometimes get with European sunscreens. I know Americans always rave about the amazingness of European sunscreens, but as a European, I actually prefer Korean sunscreens by a mile because I feel that European sunscreens always have that slightly distinct, yeah, I would say almost greasiness that they just can't really get rid of no matter how many times they upgrade a formula. But anyway, that's maybe just preference. <laughs> so this basically feels like a moisturizer, super lightweight, super lovely, super pleasant. Um, as for the ingredients, it uses five sunscreen filters, which because I can't pronounce them, I will again put somewhere here, <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the sunscreen filters are, I will probably completely mispronounce them, ethyl hexyl salicylate, which is a UV filter, homosalate, which is also a UVB filter, UVB, uh, and then Tynosorb S, which is a broad spectrum filter, uh, Tynosorb M, which is also a broad spectrum filter, and Uvinol A, which is a UVA filter. 
So kind of heavy on the UVB protection versus UVA protection, although it has two broad spectrum filters, so I'm not saying it doesn't offer good protection, but it is uh, slightly less modern, I want to say, or super new generation filters in this formula versus, again, the other launches that I've shown you, which was why I was a little bit puzzled why it's so hyped. I'm also puzzled because the texture, again, is super nice. I enjoy the texture, but it's not better than any of the other hyped up sunscreens at the moment. So I think my problem with this sunscreen is that I'm kind of waiting for what sort of baffled why this is so hyped at the moment because it doesn't really seem to offer anything special to be honest. And then there's the other thing about this sunscreen that really made me not like it. And that's the fragrance. This is just so heavily fragranced. I do not understand why. <laughs> I'm so confused because the other thing is the fragrance is really unpleasant. <laughs> it's just, it hits your nose so strongly, first of all, but then also it smells like I'm really trying to describe the scent. I had problems right when I wrote my sort of script that I always do, my notes. Like, it just kind of smells, you know what it smells like? It smells like if you are a Gen Xer or an older millennial, you still remember times from the, the mall or being in a big department store and you had all these counters with skincare and the ladies would always try to make you try stuff and would sort of spritz you with perfume or rub some sample on your on your hand and go, oh, doesn't it smell luxurious? That sort of smell where they go, oh, it's so luxurious, but it's actually just kind of old school, old timey fragrance that is really not very nice and just kind of intense. That's what it smells like. And it really doesn't go away. <laughs> It stays quite for quite a long time. So even though I don't mind fragrance in my skincare necessarily as a general rule, when it's so strong and also not a nice fragrance, I am turned off. And so for it to still, for me, be a good sunscreen, it would have to have like the most amazing bomb formula that I've ever tried. And it kind of also doesn't have that. It has a nice, again, a nice texture. It is very pleasant. But honestly, if you want a moisturizer-like texture and a vegan formula, just go for the Beauty of Joseon one. It is pretty much the same, but unfragranced. Uh, or go for the Espoir Water Splash, the green one, which does also contain fragrance but it smells kind of fresh and powdery and nice and pleasant, whereas this, again, does not smell nice. So final verdict for the Ate sunscreen, which again, very trendy at the moment, very popular. I don't get the hype. <laughs> I don't know. I, I will probably have trouble finishing this because the fragrance just turns me off and the formula is fine. Again, nice, pleasant. I will certainly show you a texture shot somewhere so you can see it really does kind of melt into skin and it hydrates very nicely. But so do 10 other sunscreens I can think of. And so I don't think it can quite compete with those also because it also is not necessarily a budget-friendly sunscreen that's kind of in the mid-range. So eh, I, honestly, final verdict, I think this one might just be an influencer-driven hype, personally, is what I think. Sunscreen number two is not a new launch. I think it's from last year or even the year before, but it has consistently been a very popular sunscreen choice in Korea. I always see it again in the top 10 or top 20 in the best-selling ranking uh, on the Korean Olive Young website. And it has been on my, it had been on my wish list for a really long time before I finally bought it. 
Um, the reason why I also picked it to review was because it's actually quite affordable. It usually comes in a one plus one deal at Olive Young and only costs around, I think, 25 or so dollars. So I find that quite, quite a good price for a 50 milliliter, you know, like 12 or 13 dollars for a 50 milliliter tube is pretty good in my eyes. Uh, can rival the, the beauty of juice on sunscreen. And because I also found very interesting that it's advertised as having a cooling effect on the skin. I overheat like crazy during the summer. I get red and I sweat like a... It's not pleasant. <laughs> so I thought, ooh, this could be really cool for my skin. And it is this one by SNP. It's the SNP Cool UV Perfect... Ah, it's wet for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, oh, I was next to my water glass. Anyway, it's the SNP Cool UV Perfect Air Cool Sun Cream. Again, SPF 50, PA Quadruple Plus, and again, Colma Korea Made, although with a different base formula than the Ate one. It uses slightly different UV filters. Um, so this one... Also, unfortunately, didn't fully convince me. I say unfortunately because I really, there are reasons for me to truly want to like this. The main reason is that the texture is a delight. The texture, probably the nicest texture of all the newer launches that I've tried. Fantastic if you have oilier skin because it's so so lightweight it is lighter than the Ate one a little bit less moisturizing and more on the hydrating side and it really has this sort of melts into your skin and kind of instantly becomes watery the moment you apply it fluid to almost uh, sort of watery essence style texture that is really just so pleasant when you don't like heavily moisturizing uh, super dewy formulas. It still leaves a bit of a dewy finish, uh, as does the Ate one, but not as intensely. So technically, this would be a fantastic choice for oilier skin. It also uses really good uh, UV filters. It uses, again, I'm not going to be able to <laughs> properly pronounce them, so I'll write them down somewhere, but it uses five UV filters. Uh, Uvinol T150, which is a UVB one, uh, then that new uh, L'Oreal one that I talked about before, Max Maxoral SX, which is a UVA filter and apparently a really good one, really strong one. Uvinol A+, which is also a UVA filter, Polysilicone 15, UVB filter, and Tynosorb S, which is a broad spectrum filter. And... It also leaves zero white cast, as does the Ate one. The Ate one, Ate one is pretty much white cast free. So it's this one because it's purely chemical. And it really just kind of disappears into your skin. Texture wise, absolutely loved it. However, <laughs> here comes the bummer. Just like the Ate one, this is heavily, heavily fragranced. And I don't know why and again a reminder i don't usually i'm not usually 100 percent against fragrance but here it just it just hits you man it just hits you so it kind of smells like oh, the beautiful texture it really has the best texture which is why it's such a bummer also it does feel cooling on the skin so it definitely has a bit of a refreshing feel to it but even without even holding my hand like this, I can smell the fragrance. That's how strong it is. And it smells like cough medicine, I want to say. <laughs> it smells like cough drops or a little bit like, almost like vinegar. You know apple cider vinegar when it starts to go off? That's what it smells like. <laughs> it is god awful and I do not understand why they chose this fragrance. 
Um, it also contains ethanol, so alcohol, which I don't mind, but I know a lot of you try to uh, go for alcohol-free formulas, so that's a bit of a bummer too. And it also contains uh, menthol, which they probably put in there to create that cooling effect. Um, and menthol can actually also be quite sensitizing. So this certainly is not a sensitive skin friendly uh, sunscreen, which again is a bummer. <sighs> so overall, I was disappointed by this. I really thought this is going to be the one that I finally can recommend to oilier skin types. But unless you have very, very resilient skin and very resilient noses and you don't mind the really intense fragrance, I don't think anyone will enjoy this, which again, I don't quite understand because it is super popular in Korea, probably because of the texture. The texture is A++. Uh, so I don't want to completely talk you out of the sunscreen. I just want to manage your expectations. So if heavy fragrance is not for you, this is not great. If you don't want ethanol in your formula, this is also not great for you. Um, if you can handle both of these things and if you have more oilier skin, this can be wonderful because it's white cast free. It is super light, very hydrating, but yeah, bit the fragrance. Just in case you think that I'm going to dismiss <laughs> all of the sunscreens in this video today, no. This last one I really like and it is a hybrid sunscreen and in fact it is a tone-up sunscreen as well and I don't always like tone-up sunscreens but this one, this one is a little bit special. It is all the rage in Korea at the moment. It's a completely new launch. It launched last month and it is by Be Plain, which is a really great, just wonderful Korean, uh, more kind of uh, eco-friendly brand, I guess. And it is this one in its very interesting purple packaging. It's the Be Plain Sun Muse Tone Up and Correcting Sunscreen with SPF 50 plus and PA quadruple plus. And this one is not made by Colma Korea, which I found very interesting. It's made by a manufacturer that I don't know, but then I'm not a super expert. Odile Monod is the expert, so she probably knows the manufacturer. And it is Nordinary, Nordinary Co. So yeah, I don't know if they're specialized in sunscreens or not, but gotta say they did really well with this formula. So interesting. Here is something truly new and interesting and I always enjoy something that is new and hasn't been made like that before. It is a tone-up sunscreen but it doesn't have the usual pink or peach pink or silvery uh, type of tone-up effect. This in fact is, as the packaging might already suggest, a purple tone-up sunscreen. So purple um, for is usually used for color correcting, uh, specifically on more yellow toned skin to cancel out the uh, dullness that you can sometimes get um, with that type of, um, what's it called again? Background? No, I couldn't think of undertone. I couldn't, my German brain couldn't think of the word undertone with that type of undertone and it's supposed to overall brighten up your face and also even out um, skin texture issues. I wasn't sure if I'm gonna like this because I'm more pink toned and I thought oh maybe it's just gonna make me look gray or weird but this is actually so nice. This really just blew me away a little bit because I just, I actually expected it to not work for me. So maybe that's why I approached it, expecting it to be maybe a flop, but then it wasn't. So maybe that's why I'm so hyped about it. Um, first of all, the texture is chef's kiss. It's so nice, especially for a tone-up sunscreen. They tend to always be a little bit uncomfortable to apply. They can often look streaky. They often don't really sink into skin quite as well, which is kind of in part their point. 
Um, I remember I had a Korean friend uh, when I lived in New Zealand and she would always use that type of um, mineral sunscreen and actually create almost like a white layer with it because that to her was her preferred aesthetic. So the streakiness that I don't want, they actually kind of want in Korea because they also often use this as a primer and just to kind of brighten up their entire complexion. But this one does not streak. It really sinks into skin and it just feels very smooth and silky when you apply it. It also feels very moisturizing. Um, while at the same time not being too hyper, hyper dewy. It is a toner cream, so it will be dewy, but it lacks the intense dewiness that for me sometimes is a little bit too much with these types of sunscreens. Also, it's not as white casty. Now it is a hybrid sunscreen, um, so it will be leaving a white cast and it likely, I actually wonder if this could use work on darker skin types because of the purple, it might actually work and I'd be so interested to see someone who's darker skinned try it out, but I can't promise that it works because I just don't know, I'm pretty pale as you can tell, so I wouldn't know what it would do with someone with darker skin, but I'd be curious to know for sure. Um, but in general, I didn't find it as intensely white casty as most other tone-up creams that I've tried. This also doesn't have that usual super glittery or glimmery, highly pinkish, silvery style tone-up effect because of the purple coloring, but also because it just doesn't... Um, the, the glittery shimmeriness is, is very sort of toned down. And I like that a lot as well as more of an everyday sunscreen option. And it is also fragrance free and it is alcohol free. So it is a sensitive skin friendly formula. It also contains quite a lot of hydrating ingredients. Although to be fair, the other two formulas, the other two sunscreens also actually do contain a lot of humectants and a lot of moisturizing agents. So especially the Ate one actually is very moisturizing, but so is this one. And this one, I think overall, much more sensitive skin friendly. Be plain in general, great choice for sensitive skin. Um, it contains four sunscreen filters, titanium dioxide, which is the mineral sunscreen filter that also creates the white cast. Uh, Uvinol A+, which is a UVA filter, Tinosorb S, which is a broad spectrum filter, and Uvinol T150, which is a UVB filter. Uh, so yeah, overall, this for me out of the three is the winner, the surprise hit, because I did not expect to like it, and I really do like it. It work, It looks very flattering on the skin. It does really even out the skin uh, texture issues, and it does make skin look more flattering and glowy while not being too dewy. And it doesn't look chalky, and it applies really nicely. Uh, so compared to other tone-up creams I've tried or tone-up sunscreens, this one would definitely rank as one of my favorites at the moment, together with the Espoir one, which I also really like. And yeah, a surprise hit, which is why I actually now ordered the physical, not the physical, the chemical sunscreen that they also brought out. They also just brought out a fully mineral one. I might get that one as well, just to kind of compare the three, um, because be plain at the moment blowing me away, I have to say. And that was my review of three more Korean sunscreens, two of them brand new launches, one uh, a little bit of an older launch that is still very popular. Um, yeah, I'm sorry that <laughs> two of them didn't really impress me that much, <laughs> but the third one I really liked. And in case you were kind of wondering about these three, I hope I could help you decide on whether or not to get them. And maybe if you're new here, you want to stick around. I do a new video every week. And I also have a blog, by the way, so you can also visit my blog. And it would be great if you could subscribe. It's so, so helpful for smaller creators. And maybe also give a thumbs up to the video. Leave a comment, discuss the sunscreens. If you have tried them, maybe you really like the ones I dislike. Um, 
it's always great to hear other opinions because I don't I don't like when reviewers just kind of claim that their their personal opinion is universal. So maybe you really enjoy the sunscreens and think like the fragrance is so nice. <laughs> maybe who knows? I'd be I'd be surprised at least with the S and P one, but who knows? And I hope to see you again next week with a new video. I think it will be an empties one because they have been piling up. So I see you again for that one next week. Until then, please take care. Bye.